Zed has an interesting place in this whole scene. I thought it would be kind of like Cursor, but snappier and less resource hungry. That assumption was dead wrong. This is my journey so far. I still love Emacs. It's just not a perfect fit for me anymore. Cursor was the clear AI leader, but others have caught up. And anti-gravity is promising, but it's not quite there yet. I've been curious about Zed for a while, so here we are. I use Vim motions 99% of the time. I currently have a slight preference for terminal editors, but that's not strict. I value agentic coding features. I was surprised at how different Zed's approach to agentic coding is from something like Cursor. We'll get to that. And the story of the people behind Zed and how it came about, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. We'll get to that too. This video is sponsored by Zed, but if you think that's going to influence my opinions, <laughs> just wait. Anyway, let's get into it. At first glance, the interface looks pretty unremarkable. Great start to a sponsor video, I know. This feature is the cornerstone of Zed's marketing strategy. Ready for it? Are you ready? Boom, there it is. I'm not even kidding. This is the very first thing they show in the demo video on their website. Jokes aside, it actually is an impressive demo. In the video, the tab switching is actually happening at 120 frames per second. So the gamers are going to be very jealous. Seriously though, working in the editor feels instantaneous. It feels considerably different than something like a VS Code or a Cursor. But yeah, the first core tenet of Zed's vision is a dedication to optimal performance. As they say, even sub-perceptual pauses add up over the course of a day to create unnecessary stress. Probably true. The irony here is that the founder of Zed may have a connection to the slower performance of VS Code and Cursor. We'll get to that. One of Zed's claims to fame is that it's written in Rust. Some might use it just because of that, but in addition to speed and memory efficiency, that theoretically should help with stability too. Let's talk about themes. Out of the box, we have Grubbox, AU, One Dark. They do have the Retina destroying light variants in there too, if you're into that. Why, why would you? You can't get more themes via extensions if you like. It's actually comical how fast extensions install. Nobody picks an IDE for extension installation speed, but, but still. AI edit predictions seem pretty good, roughly in line with what you get with Copilot or in Cursor. Press tab if you like what it gives you or just ignore them. By default, these predictions are sourced from Zed, but you have the option to source them from Copilot or CodeStraw instead. Zed does have a Vim mode, for me, that's a strict requirement. If you're using vid mode, you probably want relative line numbers. We have that. They even have a helix mode. I did not expect that. There is an AI master switch, so you can completely turn off AI. John Connor's with me on that. With regards to moving around in the editor, you can set it up so the common VS Code and cursor commands work, like Command Shift P to bring up the command palette, Command Option O to search symbols in the buffer, Command P to bring up telescope, I mean the fuzzy file picker. Vim motions in editors that aren't Vim are always interesting because the basics are usually there, but they can't possibly have every binding from every plugin that you use. I was pleasantly surprised to find that Vim surround motions work. I suspect that's one most people want. What I couldn't find right away was something like flash.nvim or Helix's go-to word function which makes you feel like you're controlling the editor telekinetically. There's a discussion about this on GitHub, so I know I'm not the only one. Okay, AI coding. First of all, like I said, there is a disable AI master switch that some people will appreciate, but Skynet said I had to leave it on for the rest of this video. Zed introduced this thing called ACP, or Agent Communication Protocol, and it aims to standardize how IDs communicate with external coding agents, examples being Claude Code, open code, and so on. It seems well received by the industry because it's already in a lot of mainstream IDEs and agents. From a user perspective, ACP is really under the hood. You're still just interacting with Zed. Output and file diff show right in the editor, just like you'd expect. But it's nice because if you already have a subscription with one of the agent providers I mentioned, you can just continue to use that subscription. Here I'm using Claude Code with my existing Claude Pro subscription. I'm very grateful Zed supports this flow because it seems like the agent provider is making money here, but presumably Zed is not. Meanwhile, Cursor is valued at $29 billion, much of which seems attributable to its own internal agent. I don't know, man, I'm not Jim Cramer, but I'm probably missing something here. Anyway, yeah, ACP integrations is pretty huge. Right now, it looks like Claude Code, Codex, and Gemini are the ACP agents supported out of the box, but you can manually add others like OpenCode. 
On their website, OpenCode actually has instructions on how to add it in Zed as an external agent. By the time you watch this video, maybe Zed will have it as one of the default agents. You can also use Zed's internal agent, which can integrate with pretty much any OpenAI compatible inference provider, which does that mean I can use my beloved Cerebras as a coding agent in Zed? Why, yes, yes it does. And it is really, really fast. This footage is not sped up at all. I suspect all inference providers will eventually have this sort of speed, but until then, Cerebras is the leader in speed by a pretty ridiculous margin. Actually, I came to realize that I can use Cerebras through external ACP agents too. I did feel like agent interaction went a little smoother with external agents as opposed to Zed's internal agent, but your mileage may vary. So for me, I think the sweet spot might be using Cerebrus models through open code as an external agent. Oh, and the beloved Olama is supported out of the box if you want to do inference locally. Pretty nice if you have some serious hardware and you wanna go that route. There is a $10 a month Z Pro subscription you can get and I have some thoughts about this. It seems like the main value of Z Pro comes down to two main things. First, you get all the frontier models without having to deal with separate API keys and billing for each company. The second is the unlimited AI edit predictions, which is otherwise capped at 2000 in the free tier. Here's the thing. You do get $5 of tokens included each month, but if you exceed that, you're paying per token just like you would without Z Pro. Wait, actually you're paying 10% more than you would without Z Pro? Don't get me wrong, there is value here depending on your situation and it does negate the need for an external agent, but with what I know now, I don't think I'm personally going to be using this. And like I said, it's pretty cool of them to allow you to bring your own API key, even though it means they're making $0 off you. I know some of you are scared to work with AI, but maybe some of you are even more scared to work with humans. You might not like this feature, but it's actually pretty cool. It's called Collabs and it's mainly intended for editing and discussing code together. There are channels and voice chat. You can invite your coworker to your channels, then share the project you're working on with them. They can then read and write code anywhere in your project, and you both get a real-time view of what the other person is doing. And then they can mess with you and just start cranking out Go code in the middle of your Rust file. Then you can right-click on their name and choose Revoke Access. Now they can no longer edit your code. Jokes aside, this feature is pretty powerful, and it isn't just limited to two people. You can have your entire team in here if you want to. That might be a lot of cooks in the kitchen, but if that's your thing, go for it. As I'm making this video, there is a Z article near the top of Hacker News, and it's about how they use Zed's collab feature for most meetings. The CEO and co-founder of Zed is Nathan Sobo. Nathan actually worked on the Atom text editor while at GitHub, which was the first IDE built using the Electron framework, which at the time was built specifically for Atom. What else is built with Electron? VS Code. And by extension, cursor and anti-gravity. Zed was actually built on Electron early in the project, but Apparently the team quickly realized it was putting too much of a damper on performance, so they wound up building their own UI framework in Rust. Make of that what you will. Anyway, overall I had a positive experience with Zed. It is crazy fast, it is a joy to work with. Zed Pro seems meh, at least in its current form. Zed basically has all the agentic coding features you could want, including integration with pretty much any inference provider or external agent. At the time I'm making this video, I do plan to continue using Zed. Like I said, I'll be keeping a close eye on anti-gravity, but right now it's not there yet. I'm probably going to be canceling my cursor subscription, especially when I'm able to get a Cerebras subscription. At the time I'm making this video, you can't even get the coding plans. Presumably they're overwhelmed with demand. I mean, I hate Cerebras and you should definitely not get a subscription. Jokes aside, Zed is worth checking out. It's free and open source. Thank you again to Zed for supporting the channel. Let me know what you think of Zed down in the comments, good or bad. I'd love to know if there's anything I'm overlooking. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.